Hey, what is going on guys? This is DK. Back at you with another video here uh, to break down the two-game NBA slate uh, on Thursday. Yep, finally again, the return of NBA. Cannot wait, guys. Um, I did already upload an early look video for this slate, if you guys want to check that out. Uh, but this will be my final look um, going over you know all the injury news that we have so far. Kind of giving my game theory um, analysis on some plays for the for the Millie Maker. Right, we have a $4 entry, $1 million to first tournament tomorrow. It's only a two-game slate, so I'll talk about players that you know you can consider, how you want to get different for that. Um, but yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos breaking out NBA, NFL, PGA, and esports daily fantasy sports slates, esports including Call of Duty, League of Legends, and CSGO. Um, if you guys, are, again, are interested in PGA, I did upload a video for the uh uh, WCG St. Jude tournament, uh, which starts tomorrow. Um, also, we are now at 3.57 thousand subscribers now on YouTube. So, if you guys enjoy all this free content, would really appreciate it if you could leave a like button on this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell. Um, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, a five star rating and review would be greatly appreciated. It's just the DK DFS show. The link is in the description below. All right, with that all out of the way, let's jump into it. So, like I said, guys, cannot wait for. Uh, I know it's only two games, but just to see some some regular season NBA. I will also be live streaming. I know it's again, it's only two games late, but I will be live probably 30 minutes before lock. So be sure to check out the live stream, guys. It's been, what, four or five months since I last live stream. So super excited to talk to all you guys again and answer all you guys' questions. Um, all right, but yeah, let's get into it. So let's go. I'm going to go team by team here. I want position by position in my early look video. Let's go team by team. Before we get to that, actually, let's take a look at the odds here. So uh, we have the Jazz and the Pelicans. Um, the uh, It's a 224 over under. And the Pelicans are two and a half point favorites, and we have the Clippers and the Lakers. Uh, this run right now sitting at two fifteen over under with the Lakers four and a half point favorites. So a couple big pieces of news I want to point out is um, first for the Clippers we have Lou Williams and Montrez confirmed out already. So that is definitely big news, right? There's some value plays we'll talk about in the Clippers who I think are very uh, very viable for for this slate. Um, AD, they have him listed as questionable with the what he uh, poked in the eye the other day. I'm not worried about it. I think he's gonna he's gonna be uh, good to go. Um, and then uh, Zion Williamson, right now they have him listed as questionable. Again, I think he's gonna be good to go. He's not injured. Uh, he just got back in the bubble. Um, I think it's just more of a conditioning thing, really. So I would assume Zion's gonna play. I would say like 95% chance he plays. Uh, again, the Pelicans need to win. So that is another thing to note. Like they have to. They cannot take these games easy. Like they're gonna ride the starters big minutes, in my opinion. Um, so let's go with the Jazz first. And if you look at the pricing here for for the Utah Jazz, I think it looks really, really good. Again, we have no Boyan Bogdanovich, never a guy that I liked playing for DFS purposes, but he was playing mid thirties minutes every night. So those minutes have to go somewhere. That production has to go somewhere. The price tags all look really reasonable on these Utah guys. So I like a lot of Utah guys. Um, so they were running a nine-man rotation going into the break. Uh, now, with uh, obviously with Boyan out, they could run an eight-man rotation. Or maybe they bump Moody in. So the guys in the rotation, the starting lineup is going to be Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, Conley, Joe Ingles, and Royce O'Neal. Clarkson's going to be the sixth man off the bench. He's a guy that is, in my opinion, going to be pretty popular on this slate. Uh, and they're going to need his scoring. So I think he's going to have to step it up with no Boyan. Bradley will back up uh, Rudy Gobert. No real interest there. I mean, I think the only way he really gets you there is if Gobert gets injured or is in foul trouble. Gorgeous Yang um, will get some minutes uh, at 3.3K. He's just more of just a dart throw then. So that's the eight-man rotation. Now, Again, I, I think maybe Moutier cracks rotation at min price at 3K, um, but uh, th there's a chance he still doesn't play and they just run the, the eight-man rotation. Um, so let's talk about these players. Right? We have Gobert at 7-1. He was kind of struggling coming into the season, but man, I mean, the matchup here against the Pelicans can't get much uh, of a better matchup. Pelicans play a very fast pace, don't play a whole lot of defense. Gobert is the guy that's going to play 35 minutes or so a night. The price is down. 
I really like Gobert. Gobert is not a guy I normally like targeting for DFS, but just the price tag, the matchup, I think it looks really good for Rudy Gobert. So do really like him. Don Mitchell, he was the thumbnail to my video in my early look uh, one, in my early look video. I think he is going to be one of the most popular, if not the most popular play of the day tomorrow. Uh, 7K, again, that just seems extremely underpriced. Another guy that was kind of struggling, but it, it's just, you, you know, you know the minutes are going to be there, right? About 35 or so uh, a night. Uh, the matchup's great. No Bojan. I mean, all these things. That's why I really like the Jazz guys. And a possibly eight-man rotation, right? Uh, Mike Conley at 6.2K. He was playing pretty well going into the break. The minutes were there, too, for him. 34, 30, and 34 minutes. Um, I like Mike Conley, too, at 6.2. And I also like Joe Ingles at uh, 5.7K. He's a guy I think goes a little bit under the radar here, but he's going to have to do more. And what I like about Joe Ingles is he fills up the stat sheet. He'll get you the rebounds. He'll get you the assist. He can get you blocks and steals, right? If you just look at the box scores for the last three games, three steals, two steals, two steals. He's a guy that can definitely get you a few steals. Um, and he can he can get hot behind the three-point line, too. So, you know, if he's shooting the ball well, Ingles is a guy that can put up 40, 40-plus 40 fantasy points. So um, I like him. I think he goes a little bit overlooked in the slate. Uh, and then I like Jordan Clarkson, too, at 4.2. And he's going to come off the bench, but I think he, he maybe plays a few extra minutes. He's going to have to do a lot more scoring. Uh, it's a great matchup. Really, like, I think my strategy right now is get three of those five guys I just mentioned in your lineup for Utah. Really. I think they look like the best team. So Gobert, Mitchell, Conley, Ingles, Jordan Clarkson. I think you play three of those guys. I think you can play four if you want to. But right now, I think getting three into your lineup looks pretty good. So really, really do like this Utah team. Uh, Royce O'Neal will get more minutes. 4.9K. Don't have a whole lot of interest there. Like, I would rather get to Ingles for more. I'd rather get to Clarkson for less. Now, sure, Royce O'Neal will have one of those games. A whole game every once in a while, he will be good. But normally, he's kind of to stay in the corner, not do a whole lot offensively. He's going to defer, right? So, I just prefer the other guys I mentioned with Gobert, obviously, Mitchell, Conley, um, Joe Ingles, and Jordan Clarkson. Again, Bradley don't have a whole lot of interest there. Gorgeous Niang. Sure, you can take a dart throw there. Uh, I think he'll probably maybe get a few extra minutes, maybe 15 or so, but nothing I'm overly excited about. Maybe Moutier cracks the rotation, but that's kind of my thoughts there with Utah. Let's move on to the Pelicans. So, again, the big news is Zion. I think he's he's almost a lock to play, really. Um, so uh, I'm just going to – well, first I'll break it down as if he's going to play – uh, if he's going to play, the Pelicans are a little bit tricky here because we have Drew at 8-6, Ingram 8-3, Zion 7-5, Lonzo at 7-4. They have to win, right? So I think those four guys are going to play big minutes. I, I even think Favors might play some more, who I kind of like at 5.8K. 5.8K, I think he goes a little bit overlooked like Joe Ingles. Uh, but if, if you're going to make me pick one Pelicans guy right now, it's going to be Lonzo Ball. Uh, 7.4K. Going into the break, he was playing 35 to 40 minutes a night with everyone healthy. And look what he was doing production-wise. I mean, he gets the rebounds. He gets the assists. He wasn't shooting the ball bad, right? Three-point land, 7 of 10, 7 of 11, 3 of 7, 4 of 8. So his shot was there. He's a guy that's going to do it all, right? Assists, blocks, rebounds, steals. Um, yeah, I think he's right now my favorite player on the Pelicans for his price. The minutes look good. Um, again, I just think that these guys are going to have to play big minutes because, again, they have to win. Zion at 7-5 um, was, you know, struggling a little bit, I guess, with 32, 32, and 34 fancy points in his last three games. Um, it's a little bit tricky here because you got him at 7-5, Ingram at 8-3, um, and then Drew at 8-6. So, hey, you see some big games there from Drew, some 60 fantasy point games. Um so if you're going to make me pick a second one, it probably would be Zion for his price at 7.5. Now, the concern there is maybe they limit him slightly because of, you know, just him just getting back from the bubble. But, again, I, I don't think it's going to happen because the Pelicans are in a must-win uh, situation here. So that's how I'd probably rank it would be Lonzo 1, Zion 2. 
uh, I guess Drew 3, Ingram 4. Um, but if the off chance Zion, for some reason, they rest him and he's not available, then the Pelicans become much, much more appealing. Like, I would probably play Lonzo and then Drew or Ingram with him and then maybe one other guy. So um, that could change this, the whole slate, but I do think Zion's going to play. Now, Derek Favors at 5.8K, I think, is interesting here. The minutes were a little bit up and down on him this season. Like, some games he'd play 30-plus minutes. Some games only 20 or so. Um, they're in a must-win situation here. And I think this could be a game where he gets extended a bit. Right? Going up against a big center like Gobert. Do they want to run Nico Melli out there against Gobert? I don't think he matched up too well. I mean, it would be a little bit of a tougher defensive matchup for Gobert having to run around and chase Melly out on those three-point shots. I just think Favors, again, matches up pretty decent against Gobert. And they're, since they're in a must-win situation, I could see him getting extended. Go, uh, Favors is a guy that, when he gets the minutes, he's pretty productive. Like, when he got 32 minutes against Dallas, double-double. 10 and 14, 35 fancy points. We got 27 minutes. I got double double. Uh, it just, you know, the big question mark is the minutes. But I could see him getting extended a bit. I think on this slate, he goes overlooked for his price. 5.8K seems priced about right, maybe slightly overpriced. So, um, yeah, I kind of like Favors as a lower own play. Uh, Melly, I have interest in at 4K. Uh, he is going to be the backup. Um, it just, you know, what are the minutes going to be like, right? So, if you think the Mets are going to be split evenly, like mid-20s for both, then obviously Melly probably looks better for his price. If you think Favors get extended a bit, which I think is a possibility, right? I think it's probably a little bit better chance if Favors plays more Mets than Melly, uh, then maybe you go Favors. But yeah, 4K, I mean, obviously that price makes him in play. He's about a $2,000 difference off of Favors. He's a guy that can shoot the three. So if he gets hot behind the three-point line, that could extend him a little bit. So yeah, sure. I have interest in Melly because he's so cheap. Uh, Josh Hart, he's going to be in the... I'm going to create like a group of guys that you can just take dart throws on. Um, if Zion plays, not a guy that's uh, going to be um, like a core play of mine, right? But he'll probably get 20 or so minutes. Um, same thing with J.J. Redick. Uh, I think he probably gets around 20 or so minutes. Uh I kind of group those guys into, like, those Lakers guys. KCP, Danny Green, J.R. Smith. Guys that are just going to kind of shoot threes. Now, sure, probably one or maybe even two of those guys will do good for their price. It's just, you know, which one is going to shoot well, right? So I don't really have a strong take there on Hart, Reddick, those Lakers guys. Um, it's it just the kind of just guys that you mix and match if you're making multiple lineups, right? Each one more, I wouldn't go there at min price. And that's really it for the breakdown here for um, the Pelicans. So, I mean, will NAW get some minutes? Maybe, but not enough for me to consider uh, unless maybe Zion gets ruled out. All right, so let's talk about the Clippers now. So the Clippers are a really interesting team. I think they're probably my second favorite team to target right now behind Utah. Um, because we have no Montrez and no Lou Williams off the bench. Those are two really big pieces to this offense. And we do have Pat Beverly questionable, too. So Montrez was a guy playing about 20, 25, 30 minutes a night. Lou Williams, about the same, again, 25 to 30. Um, those minutes and those production have to go somewhere. So um, with Montrez Harrell being out, I think that's going to be a boost, obviously, to Zubak. Uh, Joe Kim Noah, and Jamichael Green. Um, so I'd assume Zubak's probably going to pick up a start where he was starting before the break. Um, I think we probably get 15 to 20 minutes from Zubak. The question mark is, you know, where are the, the backup minutes going to go? Are a lot of them going to go to Jamichael Green? Or are a lot of them going to go to Joe Kim Noah? Or again, they could just kind of run a three-headed monster. So um, I like Noah. I like Green. I think... One of those guys will have a really good game for his price. It's just, you know, the question mark of who's going to get more minutes. Um, I think Noah is the more productive guy. Uh, but if Jermichael Green gets, like, way more minutes, obviously he'd become more viable. So, uh, yeah, I think that's that's a big question mark in the slate is what are the minutes going to be like for these Clippers bigs with no Montrez, right? Is Zubak going to get – he could get extended a little bit more. So 
I think they look, all three look good for value with Zubak, Jermichael Green, Joe Kim Noah. I'm probably going to at least play one of those guys in, in my lineup. Um, I think you could even play two if you want to. Uh, but let's talk about the main guys now. So Quiet, 9-2. I think looks okay for his price. I think he goes lower owned because I think Paul George is a guy that's going to eat up a lot of ownership at 7-2. I just think that price tag looks really, really good for PG. Um, no Lou Williams. Paul George is going to have to do more. No Montrezl Harrell. Again, Paul George is going to have to do more. Um, the concern is, you know, the, the Lakers and the Clippers are both already locked into the playoffs. So they're kind of just playing for seeding. Maybe a little bit more meaningless games, so maybe they get limited a little bit. I guess that's a slight concern you got to have, but um, yeah, for his price, I definitely prefer Paul George to Kawhi Leonard. I think a lot of people will as well. Um, so if you want to get different in GPPs, don't mind Kawhi, right? He's probably the better player, but you have to pay an extra two thousand dollars for him. Um, so again, Pat Beverly right now is currently listed as questionable. Um, if he plays, I would have some interest in him. I think he would probably get a few extra minutes there with no Lou Williams. If he misses, then obviously Reggie Jackson will get more run. But the concern, I wouldn't go crazy on Reggie Jackson exposure because, again, you have Landry Shamit. Um, you have Mann. could even get some minutes, honestly. So, um, yeah, again, it, it's we got to keep an eye on the Pat Bob news. If he plays, I think he looks like a decent value play. If he misses, Reggie Jackson becomes more viable. But, again, they still have other guys that can use. Uh, and then lastly, last guy I want to talk about here is uh, Marcus Morris uh, coming in at 4 7. Not a guy that was, he was a guy that wasn't doing a whole lot uh, offensively here. But again, that was with Lou Williams. That was with the Montrezl Hero. Now both those guys are gone. So Marcus Morris is a guy that I think goes a little bit overlooked in the slate, but he'll probably get more minutes. You know, we know Marcus Morris is a guy that is going to shoot the ball when he's out there. So he could get hot. I would not be surprised if Marcus Morris is in the winning tournament lineup. I think he's someone kind of like a Joe Ingles, maybe kind of like a Favors. Those are kind of low-owned guys that I I like. Um, and then I already, got, I already mentioned the bigs with Zubak, Joe Kim, Noah, Jamichael Green. Um, I think you're going to want at least one of those guys. Uh, and getting whichever big it is right is going to be key. Um, again, Zubak, I think, will start, probably get 15 to 20 minutes. With Green, with Noah, it, it's kind of a question mark, right? Who is going to get more run? Um, and then last, let's talk about the Lakers here. So, uh, LeBron coming at 10-7, AD at 10K. And AD dealing with the eye, I think he's going to be good to go. Um, if you're going to make me pick one of the two guys, one of the two stars, is going to be Anthony Davis. I think I like the matchup a little bit better. Going up against, you know, maybe the likes of Zubak or, or Noah or Jermichael Green. Um, whereas LeBron might be matched up against a Kawhi Paul George. so And you get a $700 difference there with AD. One thing with Anthony Davis that I would always mention is there's like a 5% chance he'll get injured and not return. Really, I think it's a, it's about 5% chance uh, that we hit the AD head to the locker room news. So yeah, if you're going to make me pick, I'm going to choose uh, AD over LeBron. Not saying LeBron's a bad play. I think he's kind of like Kawhi. Priced about right. Probably goes a little bit lower owned. Um, Kuzma, 4.5, don't have a whole lot of interest. Um, you know, the good thing is that he did play really well in those scrimmages. He got hot behind the three-point line, went for 25-7. and seven. Uh, Just when AD and LeBron are healthy, uh, his usage drops big time. Now, when one of those guys are out, that's when I usually look to Kuzma. So I don't think he's out of play at 4.5. Uh, I think he's someone that is maybe in the same territory. Again, a lot of these guys will mention KCP, J.R. Smith. Um, Danny Green, Deion Waiters might get in the rotation. Um, I think Caruso looks okay. Uh, he'll probably get a little bit more run if no Rondo. Um, I, you can plug him into that group too. Uh, again, throw JJ Redick in there, throw Josh Hart in there. Um, that's kind of my group of guys that I don't really feel good about any of them, but take shots in, in a couple, right? That's, that's kind of how I would go about it if I was building multiple lineups. If you're one lineup guy like myself, you kind of just got to hope you get lucky in whoever one you choose. Um, and then lastly, the bigs here with uh, JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard. I think McGee will start probably get about 15 or so minutes. Dwight Howard probably coming out of the bench 10 to 15 minutes. I think both are, are in play. Both are pretty productive. Um, and obviously if AD misses, you're going to want to play both those guys, but I think AD will play. Um... So, that's really it. Again, no Rondo, no Avery Bradley, but the Lakers have so many of these guys that will get minutes. Again, JR, KCP, D. 
Danny Green, Deion Waiters, they're all like 3 and D guys. Um, one of those guys will probably have a good game, and Crusoe will get more minutes than no Rondo. Uh, but no one really sticks off the page as like a great play to me. So um, that's kind of my breakdown there. Uh, as far as roster construction goes, again, uh, my favorite teams right now are definitely Utah and the Clippers. Now, that would change if Zion's out. If Zion's out, then I like the Pelicans a good amount. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to go for the million solo, you're going to have to get super different, right? So is that taking a shot on, like, a really low-owned guy? Maybe like a Moutier, right? And just hope he plays 15 to 20 minutes and gets hot. Or maybe take a shot on like a Dion Waiters and hope he gets in, cracks the rotation and gets hot, right? So, or do you want to leave like a thousand, two thousand dollars on the table to really, again, make yourself unique compared to the rest? Now, if you just want to make the best possible lineup and split it with however many people have that same lineup, that's fine too. But if you're going for the solo aspect, if you want to take down the solo million, you got to get different some way whether it be take a shot on a super, super low-owned guy or leave a bunch of money on the table. Uh, but yeah, that's really my breakdown, guys. Again, super, super excited for NBA to be back. I will be live 30 minutes before lock, so be sure to check it out. I'll be here uh, to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for everyone to come and check that video. I hope you guys all have a good day, and I will see you all in the next one.